If there's anything crazier than yesterday's so-called conspiracy theories commonly becoming today's truths, it's the fact that they call you crazy for noticing, oh, sorry that you caught us in that crazy behavior that we otherwise insist isn't happening at all. But now that you can see it right in front of your own face, you're crazy if you say you do. No matter how crazy it gets, you are still the crazy one. That's the only thing more constant than the insanity itself. Case in point, it is a conspiracy theory to say that COVID was created and not naturally originating. It is a conspiracy theory to say that the U.S. had anything to do with the virus's origin. It is a conspiracy theory to say that anyone in any sort of expert scientist lab coat had anything to do with it at all, ever, in fact. And then there they are in U.S. laboratories manufacturing a new COVID strain while denying that there's actually anything nefarious or even risky about it at all. In fact, it's a good thing. So instead of asking any questions, you really should be thanking them for their Normandy-like service. Now, of course, to be fair, this latest development does not definitively prove that Fauci cooked up Corona like a Keebler elf cooks up fudge stripes. We won't learn that until the season finale of Clown World. But it does prove we have learned absolutely nothing about the dangers of government-funded lab coats tinkering with viruses for fun. And where we don't learn from mistakes, they stop being mistakes, and they start being intentions. Headline Daily Mail on Monday, Experts slam Boston Lab, where scientists have created a new deadly COVID strain with an 80% kill rate. That may sound sensationalized, but other than to clarify that the deadliness was found in mice and not people, as the subheading does, that is an accurate characterization. U.S. scientists are cooking up a new COVID variant and testing it out on animals. It is not a debate about whether that is happening. It's just a debate about whether or not that's good. This research took place at Boston University's National Emerging Infectious Disease Laboratories, one of just 13 biosafety level four labs in the country that are authorized to handle the most dangerous pathogens. The researchers created this new Franken-Rona by taking pieces of Omicron and pieces of the original virus and stitching them together to keep you safe, of course. Remember, this is not the plot to a straight to the sci-fi channel horror movie. This is the plot to your prosperity. The researchers took Omicron spike protein and attached it to the original wild type strain, which I assume they refer to as wild because of course it came from the wild. It has no such lab origin even though we're watching a lab origin right in front of our faces. But they created this new hybrid virus, and they infected mice with it. And the mice infected with Omicron did fine. They all survived, having only mild symptoms. But the mice infected with the new Franken virus did not. 80% of them, 8 out of the 10 animals tested, died. But it is not what you think it is. This isn't some scheme to create some sort of bioweapon or control mechanism. It's not even a threat to the public at all. Pay no attention to the high biosafety standards necessary to even attempt it. The point is, you are not put in danger by this sort of research. In fact, it is saving your life. If not today, then certainly tomorrow. In response to that widespread misinformed criticism, Boston University defended its work with a series of points in a statement to the Boston Herald. The primary value of this work, they say, is to show that it's not the spike protein that drives Omicron pathogenicity, but instead other viral proteins, and learning and understanding that fact will provide a public benefit by leading to better targeted therapeutic interventions to help fight against future pandemics. That's right, they're not creating future pandemics. They're stopping them, and you're crazy if you say anything otherwise, so don't even think about using those G-O-F words at all. This is not the much maligned gain-of-function research. It's totally different. This was not gain-of-function research, Boston University says, because it did not amplify the original virus or make it more dangerous. In fact, they made the virus less deadly, not more, because the original virus killed 100% of the mice they infected, they say. Right, it is not robbery, it's just non-consensual borrowing. It's not vandalism, it's just unsolicited redecoration. It is not battery, it's just very enthusiastic sign language. A rose by any other name, or 
An unnatural Frankenvirus, by any other name, still has the same characteristics. It's not about what you call it. It's about the principles and the risks at stake. The researchers say it's not gain of function because they didn't test the new virus on humanized mice, meaning mice altered to carry human genes or other traits. Yeah, but they did test on human lung cells, according to the research paper, erasing that distinction anyway. It's not about whether the mice had human traits or not. It's about whether human cells were intentionally infected with a human-created virus. And they were. Oh, but it turns out that it's safer than the original virus, they say. Yeah, well, we know that in retrospect. We didn't know that from the start. So if the result had been different, and this new Franken virus turned out actually more dangerous than the original, well, then it would have just been the Urkel defense. Whoopsie. Did I do that? Sorry. That wasn't my intent. And that conclusion is only regarding mice anyway. The new Franken virus is less dangerous for mice than the original virus. Because they admit in the study that those mice did not have enough human similarities to draw conclusions about human danger. So in other words, we don't actually know if this new Franken virus is less dangerous to humans or not. We only know that these mice are too dissimilar from humans to compare. And more or less dangerous compared to what? That is the key analytical question, and Boston University's statement ignores half of that comparison. BU's statement emphasizes that the Franken virus is less dangerous than the original, but it completely ignores the fact that by every measure, the Franken virus is more dangerous than Omicron. And of course, in recent times, Omicron is the dominant strain in circulation not the original. According to the researchers' findings, the Franken virus replicated more quickly and killed more of the mice than Omicron did. So they say it's not gain of function because they didn't create any more dangerous properties. Except compared to Omicron, they did, by their own description. But at some level, that doesn't even matter anyway. It's not the particular results that make this study objectionable. It's the principles at stake in the practice all of which were violated. If the principle is that we shouldn't tinker with viruses just to see what kind of monsters we can create, that one was violated. If the principle is that we shouldn't mess with animal viruses to make them more transmissible to humans, that one was violated. If the principle is that the risks of artificially manufacturing viruses greatly outweigh the potential benefits, that one was violated, with the only possible response being that the benefits are actually worth it. And so that's what they're going with. Well, what's the big problem, guys? This is no different than what the FDA does all the time. You'll thank us when we stop the next pandemic before it even starts. Yeah, and how'd that work out for us last time? Because I seem to remember plenty of bat virus research in the years before a certain bat virus became quite a big problem. And funny, Every piece of the response in that case was botched. From the mandates, to the treatments, to the preventative value of certain injections that the powers that be prohibit me from referencing specifically, almost everything we were told was a destructive lie. I would have preferred absolute guesswork to the supposed scientifically informed management strategy that we had. And speaking of government management, you may be wondering, who's funding this and is it legal? Well, one of the answers is clear, the other's a little murkier, but of course, if there's one thing you can count on as an essential government service, it's taking your money and finding ways to kill people with it. Is this government funded? You don't even need me to answer. Of course it is government funded, and not just in general, but by the specific government institution you easily guessed already. Right there in the paper, this research was made possible in part through two National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases grants awarded at the sole discretion of the Keebler elf himself, Dr. Anthony Fauci. But in fairness to Fauci and the grant makers, it's not completely clear that Boston University and the rest of the grant recipients were transparent and specific about their intentions. According to the NIAID's Director for Microbiology and Infectious Diseases, Emily Erbelding, BU's original grant applications did not clarify that this specific work would be done. The BU researchers did not make clear in their progress reports to the NIAID that their experiments could enhance a pathogen of pandemic potential. Asked if BU should have told the NIAID about their desire to do this work, Erbelding replied, quote, We wish they would have. 
and the NIAID plans to have oversight conversations in the upcoming days. As a matter of policy, gain-of-function research, or this practice of manipulating viruses to give them potentially more dangerous properties, is legal, and government funding for it resumed in 2017 after a moratorium was placed on it in 2014. But any practice of it, and as a condition of NIAID grant-making, is supposed to clear a committee review process first in which the risks and the benefits are evaluated. And apparently, that process did not happen in this case. Just be thankful for your safety, though, because even when the government bucks its own safety protocols, they're doing it safely just to keep you safe. So if you have any questions about that, shut the hell up and cut another check to the IRS. Because after all, it's for your safety. At some point, we have to learn the lesson that trusting and paying government to keep us safe from things that government itself created is not safety. It's subjugation. If we want safety, then it's safety from these people, not safety by these people. That should be the goal. There is nothing in this long list of complicated jargon that looks more like somebody dragged his hand across the keyboard than it does anything sensible that is going to provide prosperity for your family. There is only one keystroke necessary to do that, delete. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Parlor. that is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chatting my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Goodbye.